Okay, so I have this counterbore tool that I'm going to use to counterbore my block. And uh, let's take it out of the box here and get it set up. You know, I looked on YouTube. I didn't see no videos on how to run this thing. And uh, I've only ever used it kind of once in practice. So I would suggest reading the instructions, although when I read them, I got confused. They seem to be uh, overbearingly confusing. So I know how to set it up, though. You take it out of the box. You turn it sideways. And you take this little nut off the bottom and this piece of plastic that gets in your way. We don't need that for now. And then you use this 20184 counterbore shim cutting plate for ISX. That's for my engine. That's for the ISX 871. It's probably the 870 as well. Okay, so. Here's the cutting blade for the ISX, or the cutting tool, the cutting head. And how this cutting head works, it's got a retractable blade right here, a uh, retractable cutting tool. So, and it locks with this little plate. So you unlock it. When it's down inside this cylinder, you know, you'll, it'll be like this. You'll be accessing it down this way with this long Allen tool. You'll take these outer two screws and you'll unlock them. Uh, I always give them like two turns. And then this set screw here, will actually run the cutter in and out. So you can set the width of your cut uh, like this. And then once you set it, you have to actually lock the set screws back. You have to turn it back and lock them back in and snug them back down. That way the cutter doesn't slip or it doesn't go in or out. And then once you do that, you can then turn the tool and it'll make your cut. Uh, how you center the tool in the bore is um, like this. When you, when you go to put the tool in, Make sure the cutter is all the way retract. Otherwise, you could bang the cutter, or you could, or you won't be in proper alignment for the bore. So, make sure the cutter is retracted. Tighten it up. I'm gonna say I'm just only use this once, so you should probably follow the instructions. But make sure that thing's all the way retracted, all the way back, and it's locked back down like this. Okay, and then this, you'll see there's a there's a tapered edge on this thing. This tool's flat with a tapered edge. This tapered edge will center this whole tool. So what you do is this thing sitting on here like this. You set this thing down in the block and you run the set screws up until this actually, uh, until this actually sits on the ledge and, and the ledge will be like this. And this will actually wedge against the very edge of that ledge. You see that little, little stripe there. Um, and once it touches that ledge, you, know, you kind of work the tool and uh, turn this thing counterclockwise so it won't cut anything, it won't make any cut. Turn it counterclockwise and you'll feel it center the whole tool up. And then you run the bolts down with your fingers and then torque the bolts to about 30 foot-pounds each. Uh, nice and gentle like so that the tool doesn't slip or slide. And then once you get this down in there, feel it and make sure it's got even drag all the way around. It's not, it's not sitting in there like this or it's not you know, crooked or the tool's not crooked. Make sure the surfaces are really clean and uh, you know the top of your block is really clean and then once you get this thing centered then you can turn it around until you access until you can get access to these set screws through here because the, the bore will be right here and then of course you unlock it a couple turns and then you look down straight down in it and you run the cutter out until it gets even with the edge of the ledge where the, where the liner sits uh, and you make it nice and even with that edge and then you lock it back down and then you start you, you put the handle in here like this slide the handle in and then you bring it down until the the cutter uh, starts to touch the ledge and then you run the set screw down this set screw right here and every one of these little lines is one thousandth of an inch so you unlock it with your fingers and you run that thing down you run it down until it grabs the weight of this thing and picks it up and then you can turn this freely and then you start backing off the set screw until you, you feel it touch. Once you feel it touch, then you know you're at zero. And then you just add two thousandths, lock it down, and make your cut. Don't ever cut more than two thousandths at a time with this tool. Uh, it can be very problematic. So I'm gonna take 32 thousandths out with it. So that means I'm gonna move it two thousandths, make a cut, move it two thousandths, make a cut, and keep doing that until I get to 32 thousandths. Of course, minus my 
uh, 4 thousandths for, because I'm going to raise the liner height. So, uh, so it's going to be about 28 thousandths of the, uh, the total cut that I'm going to make. I'm going to do that for all six cylinders. I'm going to get them all the same height. And then uh, I'm going to put the liners in and we're going to start putting this thing back together. Okay, now, put this tool together, quit talking. So, this thing goes on here. Take the towel, wipe the dust out of it, make sure it's clean. Make sure everything's really nice and clean. Start this thing, thread it up on here. There we go. Run it all the way up until it locks in. Now, there is a locking tool right here that you can put in the side of it, right there, to either lock it or unlock it, or, you know, just kind of tighten it or loosen it. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a snug, like this. There we go. Now I know it's in all the way. I can put this into my counter or into the bore on the block and uh, my tools all the way retracted so I know it's not going to bang anything it's not going to touch anything I'm going to make sure this is nice and clean and the top of the block is nice and clean no oil no residue no fingerprints you know nothing crazy so let's go put it in block okay I've got my little plate that I'm going to use that I made to catch all the shavings and dirt and dust and anything else I might be doing while I'm in there. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of grease and I'm going to put it around the edge of this plate just like this, this cardboard taped together monstrosity here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is so that when shavings are on the very edge of the plate they'll stay on the plate. They won't fall down on the cylinder when I go to remove this plate later. So I'm going to put a little grease on this thing to help catch shavings, metal shavings, so you don't fall down onto the crank. Uh, even though I have those little pig mats on the, on the crank throws, you know, it could still get down in between parts. We don't want that, so we're going to put a little bit of, a little bit of grease around this edge just to catch the metal shavings. Uh, because we are going to cut steel and it's going to make metal shavings. So, put that in here like that. Put this down in there. Nice and pretty like. Put it down in there good. Down below the surface we're going to cut. Out of the way. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, there, now we have a barrier. So our shavings don't get past that, and they'll stay up on that plate. So let's go get the counterbore tool. Okay, now I got my counterbore tool. I'm gonna put it down in this hole, nice and gentle, like. Slide it down in there, and I'm gonna run it down until it touches. And we'll run these set screws up out of the way. There it goes. And we'll run it up until they feel that it has no more weight on it. There we go. Now it's loose. So the counterbore tool is now centered. I can now center the counterbore tool in here and start all the bolts. Okay, got all the bolts for the counterbore tool. Put those in place. Okay, I got all my bolts finger tight, and I just backed them off like a quarter turn, all the, all the mounting bolts. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to make this thing center itself, and I got a, a long socket. You could use the bar, but I can't really get the bar in here because of the, 
uh, the gearbox cover or the front gear train cover. So I'm just going to use this this bar here in a socket and just sort of wiggle it and work it and just sort of let it center itself. Now this set screw here is completely loose. It's actually up off of the ledge. So the, it's sitting directly on the counterbore in the bottom on that taper on that tool. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just working it around and uh, letting it center itself pretty good. And that feels pretty good there. And then I'm gonna just tighten these up with my fingers and then apply about 30 foot pounds of torque on the, uh, the, lock, the hold down bolts. And I think they're one and one sixteenths. I just sort of gently, real gently and carefully start them all so that it doesn't move. It should feel pretty good. It should feel pretty even. Oh yeah, feels good. Yeah, you can feel it's even. Okay, so now we got to rotate it until we get to where we can see those set screws. And that's them there. And now we need our long Allen wrench. <clears throat> okay. Now I have it centered, I have it locked down. I need to lift up on it and take the weight and I'm just gonna pull it up until I've got it up a little ways and I'm gonna run the set screw down. The large set screw here. So that the cutting head is about a quarter inch or so, maybe a little less above the actual uh, ledge and then uh, I'm going to bring it back down a little bit but before I do I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and use this allen wrench to bring the cutting head back out and over the top of the ledge so let's show that if I can if I can get in there with a the camera I'm going to go ahead and unlock this thing unlock the cutting the cutter Oh, that one's already a little bit loose. There we go. I'm going to loosen that one. There we go. And it's kind of hard to see. Maybe get in there a little closer. There we go. But uh, now I'm going to retract the cutting head. And this is the little screw that brings it out. I don't know if you can see that in there or not. But I can look straight in on it. And I can see that it lines up right there. So that lines up with the ledge. And now I'm going to lock it back in place. Now that the cutting head is sticking out where it'll make a cut. I don't know if you can put this on camera. The camera can see that or not. Now the cutting head is sticking out. You can kind of see it right down in there. Right in there. It's even with the ledge now. 